All right, guys, a little different one today. Still a diagnostic video, but uh, we're gonna do a weird engine noise diagnosis. But I think the thing that's probably gonna make this one more interesting than the diagnosis itself is actually the background story with this. But let's go ahead and start off, give you a listen to this noise real quick. probably hear that ticking sound that does not seem consistent with engine speed so let me go ahead and rev it up a little bit So as you can see, it does change with engine speed, but it's not consistent or proportionate with engine speed, leading me to think this is not an internal engine problem. Obviously, an engine noise, one of the worst fears for a car owner. Certainly, the owner of this car is freaking out, but uh, he's freaking out, I think, probably unnecessarily. Let's uh, go ahead and tell you what the history is before this car got to me. So as we've seen many times before on this channel, the people that get the cars before me often come up with some crazy, bizarre diagnoses that defy imagination. And I'm hoping that that's what we've got here. Uh, I actually know the owner of this car, but I was on vacation for the last week and this noise developed in his car obviously would freak out any car owner. And he had no choice, of course, but to bring it immediately to a shop, which he should do. And he was diagnosed as having a camshaft issue. It wasn't really well defined. Now, obviously, I'm thinking that's not the case here based on the type of sound and everything. But the thing that makes it more interesting is according to the shop, they needed to replace the camshaft position sensor in order to be 100% sure that it was a camshaft problem. And that I don't know that I have exactly an explanation for, but the customer did actually go ahead and take their advice, uh, actually against my advice, because uh, it sounded crazy to me, but the owner did go ahead and get the camshaft position sensor replaced. I actually, it's actually right here that they left for him. They replaced the camshaft position sensor. As you can see, the sound is still there. Um, I guess they called camshaft on it. I don't know. But what we're going to do is figure this out. But I just wanted to give that interesting background because I certainly would not consider that a candidate for an internal engine noise diagnosis. But we'll see. I'm not the professional here. So um, one thing I did notice, though, is there is a check engine light showing on the car. What do you want to bet? I will bet you anything that it's probably for camshaft position sensor. And for all I know, it's been on the car for months before this noise started. But let's take a look at that code. Okay, so we can see there is indeed a camshaft position sensor circuit code. I don't believe that's going to have anything to do with the engine noise we are hearing. I do believe that the technician at the shop saw that, assumed there must be a camshaft problem. And of course, because it says camshaft position sensor, what does that mean for a 98 percenter? That's the part you change. Obviously, it didn't do anything. And notice, by the way, we still have the code even with the new camshaft position sensor. It is because the camshaft position sensor is not the problem. Um, I also noticed down here we have a mass airflow sensor, which is actually pretty timely. The next video I do is actually going to be a diagnosis and understanding on the mass airflow sensor. Uh, so maybe we'll be able to do um, this diagnosis as part of that video. We'll see if I can get the car back. But my job right now is to fix that engine noise. Anyway, I think this is where that idea with the camshaft and all that came from. Uh, let's go ahead and come up with an approach to figure out what that noise is, though. So as if it wasn't enough for the customer to have to pay for a camshaft position sensor they don't need, my hope is to also save him from the $3,000 quote for a camshaft that he won't need. So what I like to do on these type of noise diagnoses, I do have another video, of course, on engine noise diagnosis where I go through a whole procedure on how to do every possible test for an internal engine noise and whatever. Um, again, because I've already done that, I'll put a link to that video so you can check it out. 
I'm going to go for speed of diagnosis here, especially knowing this guy is sweating bullets as I do this video. He won't be thrilled that I took time to do this video, I'm sure. But uh, what I want to do is go for speed of diagnosis. Using a scientific train of thought, I want to eliminate as many variables as possible for this. And the best way to eliminate the most variables at one time, I'm going to remove the serpentine belt. If the noise goes away when I remove the serpentine belt, obviously it is simply one of these accessories or a pulley that is causing that noise. So let's see what happens. So this car is a uh, Volkswagen Jetta. I'm not sure the year. But uh, this is one reason why I don't like working on European cars, other than the fact my scan tool doesn't work on them. You always need these freaking special tools. And I quickly discovered that there is kind of an L-shaped little slot in the tensioner there. You need a special tool to release the tensioner. So uh, obviously not something your typical do-it-yourselfer is going to have. So I'm going to go ahead and try to figure something out to get this belt loose. Uh, it looks to me if I can maybe get some vice grips on it, I might be able to... Because all I have to do is just loosen this thing. So let's see if this will work. Oh yeah, that'll do just fine. Okay, so let's get that belt off the crankshaft and start the engine up and see what happens. Okay, I got the belt removed, so let's go ahead and see if that sound goes away now. Okay, and as we can hear, that sound did not go away. So admittedly, I'm a little bit more worried. Uh, that's definitely not a exhaust shield or anything like that. Um, and now that I can get the accessories out of the way, I can hear that it is indeed coming. It sounds like from the um, engine cover area, the front cover is where it sounds like. So um, I'm not sure if this has a variable valve timing or something like that, but we're going to have to get in there and take a look. So admittedly, maybe I was a little unnecessarily harsh on the previous guy, but it still doesn't excuse the camshaft position sensor. That is for sure. Camshaft position sensor would have nothing to do with this whatsoever. But uh, we do have an internal engine noise, so let's go ahead and check that out. I'd like to give a shout out to my viewers in Europe. You know, I love you guys. I really appreciate your support. You guys are some of the most loyal viewers, but you guys really have to chill with the stuff that requires special tools. It drives us crazy over here in the United States and it is totally unnecessary. All right, I've got the timing cover off and uh, one of the nice things about mechanical issues is that you don't need much of a brain to figure them out, that's for sure. And obviously that was a mechanical issue going on and I can see clearly what our issue is here. Uh, the, one of the first things I've noticed, this timing belt I could actually take off with my hand. There is no tension on that timing belt. And also if I zoom in here, I've never seen this before, but check this out. If we look at the back side of this timing belt, we can see that all of the teeth are stripped off on a section of this belt. And if we look down a little bit more, so if we look down at this section of the belt, you can see the teeth there, and then there is a whole section where the teeth are missing, and then the teeth start up again. So it's pretty obvious what happened here. We must have a broken timing belt tensioner. Uh, how many times in my other timing belt videos have I mentioned that often it's not the belt that fails, but a component? There's 146,000 miles on this car. I'll bet it's never had a timing service done. And I believe with as loose as that belt is and as many teeth as it's missing, this engine is pretty well out of time, causing, of course, the camshaft position sensor error. So the camshaft position sensor was actually doing its job. It was not faulty at all. It was correctly reporting that there is some type of sensing incompatibility. Obviously, the engine out of time. 
I would bet probably this also could possibly have caused the math code. Um, again, I'm going to be doing my next video on math sensor understanding and diagnosis. One of the things I will cover is what I call referenced codes. Referenced codes are when other things happen that the engine computer can't explain, so it looks to the best thing that it can point a fault to. And I do believe that in this case, the math sensor is likely to be uh, wrongly pointed as the culprit for an incorrect amount of air coming in in relationship to the fuel trim. So that's a, just a guess. We'll have to see on that. But definitely this caused the camshaft code. So obviously we must have a broken timing belt tensioner that initiated this whole problem, especially as loose as that belt is. I'll do some more looking in there just to make sure that there's no other broken components. And I don't know if this is an interference engine or not. My bet is that it is probably not an interference engine. I believe if it was an interference engine, it would have probably been toasted. But uh, anyway, owner got off real lucky on this one, I think, especially if it was an interference engine. But um, I unfortunately don't think I'll have time to show a timing belt replacement on this car. I've got other timing belt replacement videos anyway. If you've done one, you've done them all really. So anyway, we'll close this video out. We've got a broken timing belt tensioner, a lucky car owner, and also an incorrect diagnosis from a professional shop again. So all in all, that makes for a great video. Thanks again for watching. We'll catch you again soon.